everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. This is Nicole with Topaz, and today we are here for a session all about expressive portrait painting. Um, with Impression, the new Topaz product, it gives you the, um, the tools to quickly and easily produce really beautiful and expressive digitally painted portraits. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at today. We're going to show both simple and more advanced methods of creating these types of portraits and um, show you a little bit more within Photoshop with blending and masks as well. Let's go ahead and start off with the simple method of creating these really awesome portraits. So here is the original background layer. I'm just going to go ahead and make a quick copy by pressing Control J and then I'm going to go into my filters list, Topaz Labs, Topaz Impression. And it will open up Topaz Impression. If you have purchase Topaz Impression and are using it on a trial or anything. Um, if you have not updated to version 1.1.1, that was released, um, I believe, on Thursday uh, or Wednesday last week. So go ahead and you should have, whenever you open up your uh, program, a little update dialog box should uh, prompt you to update your software and it will give you the new tools that I might be covering here today. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just show you exactly what I did here. If you want a full-on introduction to the program, go ahead and check out the Introduction to Impression. It is uploaded on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash topazlabs. Currently, we're just going to be talking about what we need to kind of make these more, how I created these types of expressive portraits. I'm going to go into the slider set by clicking on the slider icon and just reset my image and go back to the featured presets. And the only thing that I did here was just start going down my preset list and thinking, what do I really want to do with this? But one of the presets that I created was based upon uh, Rembrandt's portraits. And I knew that that was in there. And I knew that because it's based off of the portrait type of image, it kind of works for portraits. It's located within the painting uh, preset category. And just scroll down. Let's see here, until we get to Rembrandt Portrait, and there's Rembrandt Portrait 1 and 2. So I just clicked on 1 to see what it would do, and I loved it already. And 2, this was a little bit too realistic for me with the size of the image. If the image was smaller as far as pixels, um, this effect would be much stronger. Um, I didn't want something this realistic. I wanted a little bit more expressive where I was able to really see some messy strokes, a lot of uh, texture going on, and less detail. So after hitting this uh, Rembrandt Portrait 1 preset, I was basically done with this image. But then I wanted to kind of customize it a little bit. I got, like I said, impression just lets you play. So if I wanted to maybe get a little bit more warmth in his face and tone down the green over here so my eyes were really dry. Uh, driven over towards the right side of the image and weren't pulled left by that bright color. So the way that I got into the sliders is just by clicking the middle of that Rembrandt portrait preset and it takes you to your slider. I don't want to mess with my brush strokes for this particular image. I really like what's going on with my brush strokes. So I'm just going to go down to the color module. And this color module is awesome. As you scroll over the individual color swatches here, it will highlight the area that that particular color range will affect. So as I'm scrolling over, I can see, okay, this blue is going to affect not only his blue jean jacket, but also his hat. And the orange here is going to affect his face, but it's also going to affect the background. That's okay. What I wanted to do is warm up his face, so I'm going to click on that orange, and I'm going to take that orange saturation and just take that up a little bit, and it's only going to affect my orange color range. Nothing else within the image. I'll take that up. Also, maybe I want to go a little bit darker or lighter. I don't know. I'm going to play with it. Ooh, I like lighter. Great. So, here is before and after. This is how far we've gone. Now I'd like to go into that green and just tone down the green on the left-hand side. So I'm going to go into my green color range by clicking on the green swatch here and taking maybe, let's see here, my green hue to the left to warm it up and add a little bit of yellow. 
which is also kind of reducing that bright saturated green that's taking my eyes away from my subject. I think I'll also take the green down a notch, so I'll take that green lightness slider and take it to the left. There we go. And I'm also going to work on my yellow range because as I scroll over I realize that there's a lot of yellow that's also in that background. So I'm going to take that yellow stature or yellow lightness down as well. So that's how easy it is to come in and customize, especially with colors and different color ranges within your images and in, in your portraits. I especially like to work on skin uh, with that orange color range swatch. Um, it usually is a great one for skin, warming up skin or brightening the skin, darkening the skin. Um, this color HSL range module just really gives you a lot of different options up for your colors. The other thing that I wanted to do was kind of look at darkening up everything but my subject. Um, so we do have a vignette module within here and with paintings, you know, vignettes, traditional photography vignettes aren't necessarily something you see every day, but you can kind of add a little bit of a vignette to get darker colors on the border and still take your eye towards wherever you're wanting it to go. And I love this vignette module that we have within here because not only do we have the ability to add a vignette and make the transition how we would like it, either very quick transition or less of a transition or very soft transition, the vignette itself is actually brush strokes. So you can see that it does it in a realistic way. It's not just going to add a more traditional photographic type of vignette. If you scroll in, you'll see that the brush strokes themselves are darkening, not just um, a darkening of the edges. It's actual brush strokes. So that's really helpful in producing a more realistic type of vignette for a painting style. Also, with our vignette center, you can easily just take this little um, dot here and move the center point for your vignette around. So if I want the center point to be on my subject, which I do, I can just quickly move that around. The vignette follows. And now I can come in and adjust my vignette and vignette transition a little bit more. I'm going to take that vignette strength way down. I might take that a little bit higher now. And I'm going to go up into my blue and just take that blue lightness down. As I'm looking at this, I want to kind of grab a little bit more blue into his jacket. And it's that quick as far as modifying that preset. I'm going to press OK and get back into Photoshop. So the simple method of actually creating these expressive portraits is knowing which presets you're really interested in for portraits. A lot of the um, presets are not going to lean towards this more expressive style. We also have a lot of charcoal and those types of presets. So if you're looking for this more expressive painting style, you'll want to look in the painting category as well as the impressionistic category, which also has a lot of um, expressive type of paint strokes. So a simple method is just clicking on a preset and maybe modifying it a little bit. Let's go ahead and go into this image because this is where I went into more advanced methods within Topaz Impression itself and I definitely want to show you some of the new tools as well. So we'll start from the top and just work our way down. Let's go ahead and take this original image. I'll make a quick copy of doing Control J. Filter, Topaz Labs, Topaz Impression. One thing about the size of the image you take into Topaz Impression, it, do, it will affect the way that the presets look on the image. So if you have a larger uh, sized image, the paint strokes are going to look or appear smaller than they would if you brought in a much smaller image. This is important to more portrait types of images because I've heard some feedback of some people taking in images of portraits and it just completely um, like blotting out their face completely. Like you couldn't even tell it was a portrait. It just 
was so messy because the paint strokes were all over the place. Well, that was because it was a smaller image. So I like to use larger imagery when, or larger um, images when I'm doing portraits because that way you still maintain um, a lot of the features and characteristics that you need for a portrait, such as eyes and lips, <laughs> and you don't lose that, but you're still able to create really um, lovely brushstrokes and expressive brushstrokes that keep that detail in there. So I actually did go through some presets for this um, image. I went into the impressionistic category and pressed on a few um, presets realized pretty quickly that I wanted to just go ahead and create my own because a couple things were happening. The eyes were really starting to go away in a lot of these presets as well as the lips started getting some strange um, strange shapes. So I thought, you know, let's just go and create my own. So the way that I got in there is I just clicked on this top right slider icon and that took me into the sliders. I'm going to press reset all to get to the default setting within impress or impression and the default setting is everything at zero but a paint stroke is going to be chosen and it's the type one paint stroke so as we scroll in and I'm just using my mouse wheel to scroll in we have several different ways of scrolling in over here on the left you can click on the zoom to uh, fill zoom to 100% or fit your image into the window. So it's fit, fill, 100%. Or you can take the, the zoom slider and move it from left to right just to zoom in and out. You can also type in or use the arrows. So several ways to zoom. I prefer the mouse wheel because it's just very simple. Again, getting back to where we were, this is the default. I'm just going to scroll in like this so we can check out especially how the face is um, uh, keeping some of or losing some of the characteristics with each brush stroke and I'm just going to start playing around. Um, I wanted to get a brush stroke that kept some of the detail but again was more expressionistic and I had a lot of texture to it. So I just went through all the different strokes and you can see all the different um, types of strokes available by doing this as well. It's really good to get to know what we have in here. The cool thing about impression is that all of these brush strokes here were actual brush strokes made by um, actually Darcy did most of them down in Austin and sent them in to uh, took them into remask, cut out the background and the developers actually plugged those particular real paint stroke images into the program. So these paint strokes come from realistic paintings and that is one of the things that makes this pretty easy to get some realistic looking results pretty quickly. Let's see here, I think I'm going to choose, I'll start with this one, it's kind of a splotchy um, brush that has all different types of edges but I think it looks pretty nice here. Now I'm going to go down and actually work with my brush stroke characteristics. Here you can work on uh, your brush size and make larger brush strokes which are going to give you more expressive type of brush strokes that really start to stand out or you can minimize those brush strokes, make them smaller. This is really important depending upon the size of your image. Sometimes when you go down in your brush stroke size you'll start to see some white um, background starting to come into the image and that's just the nature of reducing the brush size. You can play with your background at the bottom of the slider area over here and one of the new features within version 1.1.1 is the ability to change your background type from solid to actually being the original image. So you just take this toggle and move it to the right and it's going to put the original image in the background instead of um, white or color that you choose. And that really helps to fill in those um, areas of white whenever you're reducing the brush stroke size like we were. And now I can have smaller brush strokes and not have to worry about those little areas of negative space. 
so when I'm working with my brush strokes, especially with faces, I just want to try to make sure that I maintain some detail in the eyes and lips and nose. Uh, with, but it's not super important to get that photorealistic when you're working with more expressive types of um, strokes like this. My personal preference is to get a little bit thicker of paint, make it look like it's a more have more texture to it. And the way that you can do that is with paint volume. Taking your paint volume up is going to make it look like the paint is kind of coming out at you. And even going beyond that, you have your paint opacity below that. And the paint opacity is going to take the blending that's happening with the uh, brush stroke color and make it less opaque, more solid. And this gives the idea of paint strokes as well. So I like to play with these and kind of get my brush strokes completely the way that I like them. So I'm going to actually take the paint opacity a little bit down to blend in some of those colors a little bit better. And keep the paint volume a little bit more than the default to kind of give that feeling of paint building on top of one another. I'm happy with the rotation of my strokes, but if you want to change the rotation, we now have that availability within version 1.1.1. And then stroke color variation is something that was added in as well. And it's very cool. As you take the stroke color variation up, it's going to start just putting um, different color strokes within um, areas that look like they should be one color. So it just varies that color. And it can get some awesome results. For this one, it really doesn't do um, what I'm wanting it to, so I'm going to take that down. And then we come to our stroke width and length. Sometimes uh, certain strokes are going to start, uh, you'll see, for example, in this image, her lips have been a little bit kind of messed up and just by the, the stroke itself. And if you want to fix that, if it looks like your brush stroke's a little long or it's kind of pulling in certain directions, take a look at your stroke length. See what happens when you take your stroke length down. It's going to start moving some of those edges that are pulling and making the strokes long and it'll start reducing that. And you can really get the most a very specific type of brush stroke with these width and length along with the brush size sliders. You can customize it exactly for your image. So I'm going to take the width down a little bit as well. And I'm liking that a little bit better. And then we come up to Spill. Spill is a really unique slider. What it does is kind of uh, simulate the idea of spilling paint onto the next edge. So it blends a couple different um, areas of paint with the next line. So you'll start to see some of the darker paint spill into her face. Some of this lighter paint of her face spill into the darkness of her hair and the shadow there as you take the spill up. See how it just blends those edges? That will help to create a more expressive um, painterly type of style and less rigid lines that are more realistic. The other um, area, and I actually don't really uh, use it too much when I'm working with more expressive type of results, but the smudge can give you some nice blending between the strokes themselves. It's kind of like putting your thumb and just smudging smudging the paint in and moving it around. It just kind of flattens it out. And I'm pretty happy here with my brush stroke at this point. Here's before, here's after. There's some things that I'm not liking overall at this point, but most of that has to do with the lighting and the color. I'm losing some um, what I think is really important blue within her eyes. Uh, I really want to play around with that. So I'm going to come down to my next module, which is the color module. Actually, even before I do that, I'm going to tell you a little trick that I've been doing quite a bit, and that's taking my overall contrast within the lighting module down just a touch. And what that does is take away some of that realistic depth that photography has because it's, it's realistic. It looks um, 3D, but 
if you take your contrast down and start removing some of that depth, it's going to help right away um, make it feel a little bit more like a 2D painting versus something that has quite a bit of depth. So again, taking that contrast down is something that I like to do. And another um, couple tips as far as lighting, if you don't like when you take your contrast down, how dark it can get in some of your in some of your lighting or lighter areas, you can always take your brightness up. And if it starts to blow out a little bit, you can always take your overall lightness within the color module down. And what that does is allow you to get really bright areas, but still see some nice texture within the brush strokes, even within those highlight areas. So here's before, here's after. Now that I've taken my contrast down and kind of given it a more flat feeling, I'm going to go ahead and go back up to my color module. I'll go ahead and shut these and just play around with my color module. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the saturation. I think I want to really increase the oranges and maybe some of the yellows back here in the woods. I'd like to possibly take down the, the saturation and brightness of the red of her jacket, as well as um, the barn back here, and just play around with my color all together. And I definitely want to focus in on her eyes as well with the blue. So, because I'm pretty happy overall with everything, I'm going to go into my individual color ranges, and I'm going to start with the red. With the red, I wanted to take out some of that saturation, so I'm going to do that. Take that to the left a little bit and just kind of tone down that really bright saturated red. With the lightness, I might just see which way it goes, left or right. Kind of like lightening up the red just a touch. Okay, and my red hue I'm pretty happy with. Now moving on to the orange, I wanted to increase the orange saturation. Maybe take the lightness down. And as I see the that's really affecting her face now. I'm going to take that orange saturation and lightness away. Sometimes certain areas will start to affect other areas, and you just have to kind of, you either have to mask out in your, uh, if you're using it as a plug-in, or decide which is more important. So I'm going to take it up just a touch, but not too much. There we go. Now I'm going to go into my yellow and take my yellow saturation up and try to get some of these highlights out. And I'm just trying to play with the colors that are already within the image and really bring out certain color and characteristics that you would find in paintings, um, color splotches and things like that. With my green, as I scroll over, I see that my green is going to be affecting over here on this left side, this building. Maybe it'll take that overall green saturation up and just kind of Get some nice green color over there. That looks nice. Take it a little bit darker. I like that. Now we come into our aqua, and that's going to really affect the, the lighter colors within the image, kind of our wintry day. So if I take that aqua, I'll start to pull in some of those blues. Oh, I like that. I think I might take the aqua down just a touch as well. With the blues, it's going to affect her eyes and some of the background and just the environment of the day as well, the sky and snow. So I'm going to increase that blue saturation and automatically her eyes are definitely starting to pop out in a way that I like. And I think I'm going to take my blue lightness up. Oh, that's nice. I'm really brought some life into her eyes, which is important with these um, portrait imagery. Let's see here. Next, we have our purple. I don't really need to do anything with my purple, but maybe this magenta color range, I can take some of that saturation out, make it a little bit darker, just to reduce the saturation of her jacket again. Oh, that's nice. There we go. All right, so all together, here's before and after. And again, this is the more advanced as far as going through all of the different sliders and seeing what they will do to your image and just customizing everything yourself instead of starting with a preset. I will say that after I did this particular image, I saved my preset, which is very important if you have a certain look that you start developing, especially with um, 
a highly customized setting, you want to save it so you can apply it to your next image. I'll show you how to do that once we're done with um, customizing this look. So we've already played with our brightness and contrast. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, vignette, I don't really want a vignette for this image, so I'm just going to leave it all the way at zero. And then we have our texture module. The texture module just really allows for the um, realistic characteristic of your medium to be applied in the image. So you can have no texture and actually print on canvas. Um, which is something that I would suggest um, or print on the type of texture that you're wanting it to actually be on this um, finished digital painting or if you don't have a medium to print on or a different type of texture you can add it within the program so it looks like that texture is there so if I wanted to add canvas I'm just gonna choose let's see here can't one of my favorite canvas presets which is canvas 4 and then I'm going to take my strength up. Before I do that, let me go ahead and scroll in. I'm going to take my strength up and you'll see that texture, that canvas texture, just start to show up. And if you don't want it as strong as that, you can just take it to the left to minimize the strength or you can get very strong texture as well. When you add in texture, the texture of your paint strokes will start to diminish um, just because there's so much texture coming in with the canvas texture. So when that, when that happens, and that does has happened to me several times, I get my brush stroke all perfect and then I realize, oh no, I haven't added my background texture yet. So I'm just going to go back up into my paint stroke and work really quickly with my paint opacity and my paint volume just to bring those brush strokes back to life. Okay, I like that. And let's go back down to the bottom, to the texture. I'm going to take a little bit of strength out just to blend everything really nicely. You can change the size of your canvas as well, which is important if you have a small image. You don't want the canvas to be huge on your image. You want it to be in scale with the subject and um, whatever size you'll be ending up with. So you can change the size of your texture here. And we already looked at the background type. Um, if you wanted to come in and actually give a different background, this is really important for sketches or the charcoal presets that we have in here. You can come in and you can use the color picker to choose your background color. Then you can add some sort of texture so you can have more like a creamy paper instead of just this bright white background. But for this one, we're keeping the original image as our background. Now that I have gone through and highly customized this look and I'm really happy with it, the way that I save my preset is coming up to this little plus sign at the top of the slider panel. Click on that and a preset dialog save box will come up and you can just name it. So I will name this Lad winter. <laughs> and I'm just going to say save. I'm not going to tag it into any of the uh, into any of the preset lists. I'm just going to press save and what that will do is automatically take it into my presets which are at the bottom of the list and now I can go to my plaid winter preset, click on that and it's applied. Let's just change it real quick and go back in so you see that it is saved. And that is a more advanced method of going about creating these more expressive paintings. I hope this gave you a really good in-depth um, uh, view into how you would do this all custom without starting off with a preset. Let's go ahead and we can go into this I'll go into this uh, other winter image here. Here's before and after. And I love this image, but I thought it was a great choice just to take in and try to see if I could make it look like a painting. Um, and there were a few things that I did right away. And those were the tips that I was telling you about with the last image. Basically just taking that contrast and reducing the contrast to make it more flat less depth to it is going to just really give you more of a a painting look. 
Let me go ahead and maybe start off with a preset. For this one, I wanted to get really expressive lines. Um, and because the background, especially over here on the lower left, didn't have any detail whatsoever, I wanted the actual textures of the brush strokes to really become an important part of the painting versus my subject alone, but the actual uh, paint technique or the style that was being applied. And in my mind, I knew I wanted to get something really out there, so uh, I went to a couple different presets in the painting category, and that was the Turner Sunset preset is where I started out. really like the strokes that happen with that. They're definitely more expressive and um, uh, they have it really met it, it really takes some of the detail and uh, photorealistic look away. So let's see here. So I went there and I thought, here's the Turner Sunset preset. I thought, you know, I like that, but that actually takes it a little bit too far. But I like that um, you know, longer palette knife type of look and that made me think about the palette knife and oil one preset which I really enjoy as well so I just scrolled back up went to the palette knife and oil and there is where I started for this image I really like the actual strokes themselves thought it added some interest but right away I saw issues but I knew I could come in and customize it to what I needed for this image the issues I saw with this one were the overall saturation just does, uh, doesn't work for me here. So I scrolled down to my color and I just double clicked on overall saturation to get it back down to zero. And then I went in and worked with my um, individual color ranges. I did put it, the overall saturation up just a touch. Then I just scrolled over. Let's see here. Here's the red. Here's orange. Orange is going to affect her hair a little bit, and I want to have that start to pop out. So I'm just going to take that saturation up, maybe the lightness up a little bit. Yellow is also going to affect her hair, and I really want that to be a nice bright point, since a lot of this is just blue and more white. The contrast is already down. I'm just looking down here in the lighting, but I'm going to take it down a little bit further. Take the brightness up a little bit to not lose my highlights, but then take my overall lightness by clicking on the big color swatch to the left that has all the colors. It'll take you back to your overall hue, overall saturation, overall lightness. I'm going to take that to the left to get some texture into my areas uh, of just white. So that helped remove a lot of the depth just by doing that. Now I'm going to go into my blues and really play around with those since a lot of the image is blue and aqua. I'm going to click on my aqua first and let's just see, I'm going to take my saturation up just a touch. But I think I want to take it a little bit more warm instead of cool. So I'm going to go up to my aqua hue and move that a little bit to the left and that's going to start bringing in some yellows, making it a little bit more tealy. I guess, <laughs> color. And then you can also play with the lightness. I'm going to take that dark, darker a little bit. Blue, I'm going to do the same thing. Come in here and play with my saturation. I think I'll take the saturation up just a little, but actually move it to the left to create more of an, a teal look. Take that lightness down a touch. There we go. And I didn't really affect her face with that orange slider very much, and so I don't know why. Um, and as I scroll over to the left, I realize that her face is actually going to be more affected, or her skin is going to be more affected by this red color range within this image. So I'm going to click on that. And I think I'd like to take it a little bit more saturated. Maybe a little bit lighter as well. Yes, I like that. Okay, so overall here's where we are, here's before and after. The other thing that I would do for this image, and again, this is all personal preference. That's the cool thing about this program is that it'll just take you where you really want to go with it. Um, I can give you tips as far as where to start off with some different types of presets and how to customize it. 
but as far as those decisions, it's really up to you. As you play around with it, it's really going to take you in the direction that maybe you uh, didn't think you were going to go down. <laughs> Alright, so for this image, I, I'm really liking all the colors now, but as I'm continuing to look at it, I'm actually bothered by some of this texture, especially on her face. I want to tone this down a bit, but I want to keep the um, I want to keep the uh, kind of buildup of paint that it's simulating. A tip about the over-texturizing of the strokes like this, this is kind of a tip. Go to, instead of messing around with your brush stroke and trying to figure it all out, go to your light direction. It's all the way in your lighting module and it's going to, your light direction is going to change the way the strokes appear enormously. For example, if I put my light direction directly on the uh, middle here, meaning light really isn't coming from any direction, you'll see how different these look. It's, it takes away some of the buildup and uh, detail of the paint strokes themselves. If you want to add that back in, you can slowly start to move in one direction until you get the amount of buildup in texture that you want without this over texture really really hard lighting coming in from the side that you get. So you can really manipulate the way these brush strokes look through this light direction instead of the just the brush stroke module. So I'm happy with that. Here's before, here's after. Let me show you that. that was a little quick here. Here's before, here's after. I feel like taking the contrast out and really manipulating the colors and saturation levels gave this much more of an expressive painting portrait versus a uh, photography portrait. Press OK. I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you guys. We have about 15 minutes left. So I want to see what questions are coming through. There's a lot of uh, information covered today. So I want to make sure that I get to as many questions as I can. Let's see here. Lisa says, is there a George Seurat preset within Impression? Yes, there is a Seurat preset. Let's take, we'll take this image in. Make a quick background copy here. And I'll show you where they're located. You'll see the actual uh, Surat presets um, that are named after Surat on in the painting category, but we also have pointillism presets within the impressionistic category. So you can um, try to simulate the type of um, look that you're going for. But let's just scroll down so you can see them. Here's Surat afternoon one. And this is a larger image, so it's kind of hard to see all the different um, points. So if you scroll in, you can see that these are just circular brush strokes based off of pointillism and his technique. Here is Surat Afternoon 2, 3, which has a little bit more realistic colors, less saturation and brightness, and 4. We also have within the, like I, let's see here, the Impressionistic category, Pointillism 1 and 2, which I really enjoy as well. And those are going to be not as uh, circular of a brush, a little bit more texture to it, but the same idea. Eric says, can you explain how to use masks with this plugin? Sure, Eric. Um, within Topaz Impression, this version at least, we do not have a masking capability. So I suggest that you use something like Photoshop or Paint Shop Pro or um, something that gives you the capability of, um, of using your masks. So if, let's say, I get to a certain point, so let me go to a different preset. I think I want to go to something that really messes this up since it's such a large image. I know the Turner Sunset will have some nice, oh yes, so we see a lot of actual 
strokes in this preset for this image. I'm going to click into it, do a couple quick things. Maybe take some of that spill away. Uh, the spill, again, is going to spill the edges of the paint into the next area of paint. And if you start to see it looking a little too much, you can take that spill down. It usually will help. There we go. I'm going to take that spill up a little bit more. I, I want to keep the look just not as heavy of a spill. There we go. Next, um, I'll probably just looking at this, I see, especially in her face, like the, the strokes are just too long in some of the areas. So what I'd like to do is take the stroke length down and see if that helps. It definitely does. For me, at least. So here's before, here's after. There are a couple things that I would um, want to maintain with this image, but I really like the rest of the overall effect. And that's when a mask really comes in handy. So, for example, if you want to keep the um, not as much effect on the eyes and get a little bit more eyebrow back in the um, image altogether, we can do that through our masking module. So I'll go ahead and press OK here. The effect is applied. And now what I can do is go to my layer, layer mask, and say reveal all. And reveal all is going to give me is going to give me a white mask, so it's going to let me see everything that's happening with this image. Now I can paint on that white mask with a black paintbrush to cover up certain areas of the image and mask it out. Um, so I can see down to the layer below. Let me go ahead and just click into my black brush here. I'm just going to grab a regular brush. I want to make sure that it's very soft. I'm going to take that hardness all the way down. Uh, mode normal. My opacity I'm going to take way down to maybe about 15% and just slowly paint back in certain areas where I want to maintain a little bit more of that original detail. I'll leave the float 100% and just zoom on in to her eyes and we'll start there. I'm going to take the brush size down just by clicking on the bracket keys on my keyboard and start painting on her eyes. And I'll go ahead and do a little bit on the eyebrows as well. And her eyelashes and eyelids. Maybe on the nose too, just to bring out a little bit of that shadow from the image, the original image. And I'm going to go on to her lips as well. And so very quickly I was able to, oh, let me show you the mask itself. Let me disable layer mask. Here's before and after. Got a little bit more detail, a little bit more color. That's how I would use masking with this image, is just by doing a little bit more selection, brushing in or brushing out of the overall effect and blending it in with the other image. Now what I did with this um, image initially is, is different. Um, I This is where I came, sorry, one second. This is the effect that I applied when I was playing with it prior to right now. So here's before, here's after. I started off with that Turner Sunset preset, but I did a lot of brush stroke work as well as color uh, manipulation to get this result. And let's scroll all in. And then let me show you what I did here. Uh, what I wanted to do was actually bring back some of that original color of her eyes because I thought the color was so beautiful and I was kind of missing that within the painting. Here's before. You can see that just beautiful brown. Here's after. It kind of muddies up the brown and 
blends it in with her hair, and I wanted to have some of that original pop of eye color. What I ended up doing was taking the background, making a copy, and placing, let me just go through this whole method. I was using my blending modes to get some of that original color back, and the way that you can do that is by taking the layer that you want that original color from, and that's my background layer, making a copy, just made that copy, just by pressing Control or Command J, and dragging that layer, let's just call it blend layer, above the layer that I want to affect with this color that I'm going to apply. So I'm going to take that blend layer and just drag it above my image. And now I see the background image, and that's okay. But now I want to use a some sort of blend that will allow for me to bring back in the natural color, but still maintain some of the painting effect, not actually bring in eyes that look like a photograph, because that's kind of weird. <laughs> the eyes look like a photograph, but the rest of the image is painted. We don't want to have that effect. So if I go to my color um, blend and scroll in, you can see that I get some of that um, color back in the eyes, but I still maintain a lot of that texture. Now I don't like what's happening for the rest of it, so what I'm going to do is use a layer mask on this blend layer layer. <laughs> so what I would do is say layer, layer mask, hide all, and now I have a black mask, so that doesn't allow me to see anything, and now I can paint on this black mask with a white brush and reveal certain characteristics about the layer that I just covered up, and I would just want to reveal the color of her eyes. So I'm going to scroll back in. I'll go over here to my color swatches, just switch them out to get my white one on top and use that. I have my brush. I'm okay with the 15%, and I'm just going to paint right on her eyes, make sure that my um, Blend layer mask is the one that's selected. It is. I'm going to do a couple of different strokes here. I'm just kind of build it up to the color that I want it to be. And it's pretty hard to see as it goes very softly. But once I get there, I'll show you this before and after. Here's before. Here's after. You can kind of see how that uh, works. Now, I don't really like the way that that's happening, so what I'm going to do is go back to my color and maybe try something like soft light. Ooh, there we go. Soft light still maintains the brush strokes as well, but now I can get a lot of that color back as well. So that's how I would use blend modes and, um, and masks within the image, or within the um, digital painting process with impression. Let's see some other questions. Anita, great question. She says, do you suggest taking the photo into any of the other Topaz plugins such as Simplify or Adjust before beginning? That's really up to you as far as um, if you want to get something that has a little bit more depth than um, uh, exposure adjustments and things like that. Taken into adjust, you get some really nice effects. Um, you can also pull out some really interesting colors within adjust as well. Let's cancel out. We can go through that process. Let's take this winter plaid girl in. So I feel like she'll give me the best colors right now. So I can really show you how this might be a good process. But yeah, combining uh, any of our filters with Topaz Impression can start to give you some really cool results. Of course, any of the more um, creative filters. I've been combining Restyle with Impression to getting awesome results. I'm loving Restyle with Impression. But I really haven't tried Adjust yet with it. Simplify would be a great tool as well. You'd ask about Simplify to minimize some of the detail in your uh, image that you take into impression to get the actual um, brush strokes on. So here is um, adjust. Let's head over, let's just come into the global adjustments, go into color, and just take my saturation boost up. Saturation boost right out of the 
just the saturation boost alone can give some great colors that you can take directly into um, impression and all of a sudden it's looking much more like a painting. Um, so just that slider alone is an awesome tool for me at least, I'm finding. You can also come into your finishing touches down here and play around with your overall warmth. Get it a little bit more warm. You can play with your overall tone and get some interesting um, toning going on, which can be really uh, great for more painterly styles like we're working on here today. So let's say I want not black, but maybe some nice dark blue in my shadows. I can get maybe some blue in my lower highlights. Okay, there. And maybe some warmth within my mid tone highlights and my overall. White, so I think I'll take that more towards cream or yellow, say okay. Now I have a more toned image. I can take that tone strength and take some of that tone out or make it really, really, really heavy on there as well. And take this into impression to get very different results than I'm able to get with an impression alone. So combining any of the plugins with each other will allow you to really expand on the creativity. So here, let's go to painting. And let's just go to oil painting by Jim Masala. And right away you have a very different feeling painting than we did within um, just using impression. And so a lot of colors came out, a lot of toning capability within Adjust. And that's really what I've been using it for within, let me just press OK here, with Restyle as well. Restyle is a color program that will recolorize your image into different color themes. And there's over a thousand different themes within this program. And you can really get some very interesting results. I've been using them on more landscape and sunset type images, not on portrait imagery. But let's just go to the portrait section here. It's going to load those presets. Go ahead and open it up. And oh wow, that city window seat preset. Click on that. And all of a sudden you have a completely different color theme applied to get a completely different look. So you can take these images or these um, paintings and really go much farther with them by combining them with another program. That was a great question, Anita. All right, everybody, those are the end of the questions. Thank you so much for joining me here again today. Thank you, Darcy, for answering questions. And I hope you're all able to come back to another impression webinar, which we're going to continue covering over the next week and a half or so. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day or evening or morning, wherever you are. Bye-bye.